Amen. Thank you, Hollis. Good morning. Welcome to Bridgeport Christian Church. Um, it's just wonderful to see all of the visitors here today, and we sure hope that this service will be a blessing to each of you. If you're watching on live stream, uh, please leave us a comment so that we'll know that you're worshiping with us. Um, we welcome here at Bridgeport, we welcome all to worship with us, to join us at the Lord's table, and to participate in the life of the church. And we at Bridgeport are committed to caring for God's creation, just as he entrusted us to do. Um, our announcements, if you'll turn to your the back of your bulletin for announcements. Um, I'll let Pastor Ann talk about that in just a minute, the first one. Okay, our interfaith service is Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. Uh, we will have an interfaith choir and some other special music. And also, if you um, have uh, told Rhonda that you would be bringing cookies, uh, don't forget those cookies. And if, you <laughs> if there are others who want to uh, bring some cookies for that reception afterward, please do. Or let Rhonda know. Rhonda, raise your hand. There she is. Okay. Um, Pastor Ann's going to be out of town on the 27th through the 30th, and the office will be closed for Thanksgiving the 28th and 29th. Um, and I want to remind you of our Christmas lunch for those of you who have RSVP'd and uh, plan to attend. Um, it's next Sunday at noon at the Evergreen. Okay, and. Pastor Ann. Yes. Advent is upon us, my friends. It begins technically next Sunday, and this year our all-church study is based on this book, The Gift of the Nutcracker. I know it was available last week, for, and many of you picked it up. Some of you noticed that we got the large print edition. That is not a commentary on anything except the price. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> uh, yeah, sure, sure, yeah, yeah. Um, but I want to invite everyone to attend the two Bible studies that will be offered. We do the Bible study the Monday before the Sunday of Advent. So we start Advent Bible study tomorrow at 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. on Zoom. You can find the link to the Zoom in the blast or if you are not currently receiving the blast or, um, or if you... Um, if you just need the Zoom link, let me know, and let me know if you plan to attend the 2 p.m. or the 7 p.m. I send out a reminder email every Monday just so people don't have to go searching for their Zoom link all the time. Uh, the other announcement that I have, uh, I mentioned it in the blast this week, but we are having some technical difficulties. So I'm going to try to explain them as best I can to you. There are three different ways that we send out email here at Bridgeport. The first is how you receive your blast, which is through an online server called MailChimp. The second way we re that you receive email is through our Breeze Church Management app that uh, is also serves as our church directory. When you receive an email through that, it comes up as a blind carbon copy. You can't reply all to it. That's the second way. The third way is our actual email addresses that use a regular server. For some reason, AOL.com has decided that it doesn't like our server anymore. So those of you with AOL addresses are receiving the messages through MailChimp and receiving messages through Breeze, but you are not receiving messages directly from myself or Valerie. The harder part of that is AOL is not telling us that they are not that they haven't allowed you to see our email until about a week after we send your email. So with that being said, if you have a second email address that isn't an AOL address, if you could let the church office know, that would be super. We are going to do our best to fix it, but we truly don't know how at this time. So um, that, I believe, is all the announcements that I have. Is that, does anybody else have any announcements that we may have forgotten? Then with the children, please join me up front for children's blessing. You don't have to. 
Okay, I need my arms. Thank you. You need your arms too for that matter. <laughs> and we say, the Lord be with you, and the congregation responds, and also with you, and the congregation says, the Lord be with you, and we respond, and also with you. All right, y'all are with Donna and Laura today. choir. Would you join me now in our responsive uh, call to worship? It's inside your bulletin or on the screen. You will read the bold. Christ came to be our king. We have come to be Christ's people. The king of kings calls us to follow him. We have come to be Christ's people. Christ came to be our king. We have come to be Christ's people. And now, stand if you can to and join us in our opening hymn, Rejoice the King, the Lord is King. Pray with me, please. <clears throat> Creator God, we are gathered today to worship you, to praise you, and to seek your guidance for our lives. 
Open our hearts to receive your word through scripture, the message, and through song. Lead us to join our will to your will. Make your purpose our purpose and your love our love. And now hear us as we pray together the prayer your son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, For thine is the kingdom, kingdom the power, and the, and the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. seated. Please join me in the prayer of centering as found in your bulletin. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Our first scripture reading today is from John 18, verses 33 through 37. Pilate went back into the palace. He summoned Jesus and asked, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others spoken to you about me? Pilate responded, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your nation and its chief priest handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus replied, My kingdom doesn't originate from this world. If it did, my guards would fight so that I wouldn't have been arrested by the Jewish leaders. My kingdom isn't from here. So you are a king, Pilate said. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. I was born and came into the world for this reason, to testify to the truth. Whoever accepts the truth listens to my voice. This is God's word for God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And now, Kathy Crabtree will present very special Thanksgiving music. Good morning, church family. As many know, I'm a tribal citizen of the Chilagi Nadagi. And this morning, I'd like to share some of my culture with you through music.
Thank you so much, Kathy. Our second testament reading today comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verses 4 through 8. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace and peace to you from the one who is and was and is coming, and from the seven spirits that are before God's throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from among the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To the one who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood, who made us a kingdom, priest to God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and always. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, including those who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. This is so. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is and was and is coming, the Almighty. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Today is a weird kind of day. It is the Sunday before Thanksgiving, of course, and it's the Sunday before the first Sunday of Advent. And that is what makes it weird. Well, at least that's what makes our scriptures for this Sunday a little out of place. But today is actually a special day in the life of the church because it is the last Sunday of the church year. Now, most of our children can probably tell you this in a lot more detail than I can, but the way that we understand the church year is a little bit different than how we normally tell time. Most of the time, when we think of a timeline of a year, we go from January to December, a straight line of time from beginning to end. Now, there's others of us, like me, who have a tendency to think about time in school years, August to May, with June and July not exactly belonging anywhere. But what we teach our children and what I believe is good to be reminded of is that time is actually a circle where the beginning is the end and the end is the beginning. And that's where we are today. We are at the end of the church year as we remember and celebrate the reign of Christ Sunday. This means that as we look to next week and the beginning of the Christian year, we are remembering exactly who Christ is and has promised to be. Now, with that being said, I learned something this week that I found to be very, very interesting. As with every other day that we celebrate in the church, Reign of Christ Sunday actually has a very interesting origin story. It was established in 1925 by Pope Pius XI in his Quas Primus. He established this Sunday in the church year for three reasons. So that nations would see that the church has the right to freedom and immunity from the state. So that leaders and nations would see that they are bound to give respect to Christ and so that the faithful world would gain strength and courage from the celebration of the feast. As we are reminded that Christ must reign in our hearts, minds, will, and bodies. Now, many of us who are history buffs will probably see the connection between what Pope Pius XI was doing here and what we know was happening around the world almost 100 years ago. Now, with that being said, and even with as out of place as our scripture readings feel today, I believe that there is something we do need to be reminded of in this space today. So let's start with Jesus and Pilate. 
Now this is a scene that we know fairly well. Jesus has been arrested and beaten and taken to Pilate, who has the weight of the Roman Empire behind him, to do whatever he would like to do to Jesus. And we have what is a classic Hellenistic battle of wits between them. Pilate asks Jesus questions. Jesus answers the questions, but not really. And then Pilate declares Jesus to be king, and Jesus doesn't deny it, but also doesn't completely claim it. Why? Well, the understanding of king and kingdom is not the same in the Roman Empire as it is in the kingdom of God. And Jesus all but says it. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. For Pilate, Truth is an intellectual understanding. But for Jesus, truth is about revelation. And Jesus' entire ministry is about revealing the true nature of this world. And this leads us right into our scripture from Revelation. And honestly, Revelation is probably one of my most favorite books of the Bible. Now, mostly this is because it is completely misunderstood, and I love to tell people what it really says. Now, the biggest thing that we need to remember is that Revelation is actually a message of hope. As one of my professors used to say, the whole point of Revelation is that, in the end, God wins. We often get so lost in the seals and the beasts and the living creatures and the random symbolism that has literally nothing to do with us that we lose the message. Revelation says, remember the worldly powers? Yeah, they won't have the last word. All that crying and death and oppression? Yeah, they won't have the last word. All that nonsense that people have created? Yeah, they won't have the last word. But do you know what and who will have the last word? The word. That is, the word made flesh will have the last word. And that word, my friends, is welcome, forgiveness, grace, and love. It is built into the very essence of creation, which is the alpha, and will continue through the end, which is the omega, despite appearances to the contrary. So then, what does it mean when we declare that Christ is the alpha and the omega? Well, it's actually a call back to the burning bush, where God tells Moses, I am that I am. I was who I was, and I will be who I will be. It is also a culmination of the good news. Christ is Lord, the beginning, the ending, and all that is. It is a reminder that Christ is eternal, incarnate, and in relationship with us. It also reminds us that God is a God of salvation and liberation and that this world is not a one-and-done event. It reminds us that God, through Christ, continues to lead God's people and continues to call us back to faithfulness, generation after generation. It also reminds us that Christ's work is not yet complete, just as the cycle of the church year reminds us. In the Episcopal tradition, as they come together as a community for the Eucharist, the priest reminds the congregation of the promise of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. 
It is through that lens that we interpret the past, present, and future. We interpret it all through the seasons, in the light of Christmas, in the cross, and in Easter. Once again, Christ's birth, life, and death is not a one-and-done event, but is part of the continual unfolding of God's redemptive work, bringing all creation into the kingdom of justice and peace. Christ is first and last and first again because the last hasn't come yet. God has done this. God is doing this. And God will do this. Folks, let us remember today as we celebrate the reign of Christ, the promises made to us in faith. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, did not come into this world the way anyone expected. Christ did not come as a righteous warrior in the way the world understands it. Christ came humbly, born the same way as each of us. He grew and learned and prayed, and when the time came to take his place, he preached and told us all that things in the kingdom of God don't look the same as they do in the kingdoms of this world. Christ preached love and peace and equity and justice. And then as the end approached, he rode into town, not on a stallion wielding a sword ready to take down the Romans, but on a donkey, while people sang, God save us, and waved palm branches. And in, for what all intents and purposes looked like the end, Jesus claimed his place as king, while still reminding everyone that it wasn't going to look the way they had imagined. And then Jesus did what no one thought he could do. He defeated death. He showed everyone that the rules and structures of this world could not defeat God's kingdom. And we know that he will come again, and in the end, God wins. This is why the church here is a circle. Through the circle, we continue to tell the story of God's redemptive love and power through Jesus the Christ. We are reminded over and over again that the story isn't finished, but that God's redemptive power continues to work in all things, even when sometimes it doesn't seem like it. So as we look to the end that is the beginning, let us continue to walk in faith, knowing that God's love will never leave us, and God's redemptive work through Jesus is not complete. For Christ is the Alpha and the Omega, and the Omega and the Alpha. Christ was and is and will be from now until forever. Amen. Amen.
a little story that I was going to tell, but I woke up in the middle of the night with my mother-in-law on my mind, Evelyn Hayden. I know you all remember Evelyn. Um, we always had Thanksgiving at her house. Um, the whole Hayden clan converged on her house for this wonderful feast. But one thing that I remember about her is that she always plated up food um, and we would deliver it to the widow next door, to her friend down the road who had anxiety so bad she couldn't leave her home. Evelyn always offered a hand up to those in need. And so today, we can offer a hand up um, on Thanksgiving Day to the Access Soup Kitchen. They have their walk, away, walk of awareness that starts at 8.30 a.m. at the VFW. The route has changed a little bit with the singing bridge closing. And our own Jody Hillard, who, was on, who served on the board for years and who walked many miles on that walk of awareness, remembers this. Um, but if you're not able to do that, you could also uh, make a donation through their site, their website, or you could stop by the soup kitchen. They would be very, or most appreciative to get that. Um, and now you can contribute to the ministries of Ridgeport Christian uh, through your offerings when the plate is passed or by sending a check in the mail to the church or on our online service, Givelify. Thank you. Gracious God, we offer these, our humble gifts, to you. Bless them and multiply them through our ministries of love and compassion for all here at Bridgeport Christian. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Please be seated. <clears throat> Once again, Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and the end. When we come to this table, we recognize a time warp capacity built into it. 
We gather around this table and think of the beginning for this meal. Jesus in an upper room with his disciples, encouraging them to remember him every time they broke bread and shared a cup poured out for the forgiveness of sins. We also anticipate what John of Patmos imagined at the end of time. Jesus seated on a throne, ruler of the kings of the earth. In that future scene, thousands gather to fall on their knees in honor and praise and worship. And in between the beginning and the end comes what is now. This sanctuary, this live stream, this community, this final Sunday of another church year. So let us all remember that all are welcome to share in this meal. A feast remembering Jesus in the upper room. A feast in anticipation, believing that love wins at the end of time. A feast in gratitude for what it is here and now. So come to the table, for all are welcome here. We take each element in unison, serving one another as the trays are passed. Just pray. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, later this week we will gather around tables with family and friends. Some of us will eat alone. Others will be in places we would, where we would rather not be. This table, however, offers a loving space for everyone. We thank you for this tremendous blessing. We are all equals here, and we can all claim the gift of love through your Son. We thank you for the church family gathered here today, as well as for our siblings gathered at tables around the world. As we share the bread and cup, strengthen us for the work ahead. Fill our hearts with thanksgiving, and with love for all our neighbors. In your son's name we pray, amen.
On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us take the bread together. Then after supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us take the cup together. As we come together in prayer this morning, let us begin in silence, praying those prayers we hold in our hearts and listening for the voice of God who is among us. Let us pray. Gracious God, you are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end and everything in between. And today we come and remember not only that, but your promise through Jesus Christ that all good things will come, that your kingdom looks different and that love truly will reign in the end. Today, God, we do come with much on our hearts and minds. We pray for those who are sick, who are facing ongoing treatments, who are facing procedures, for those that we don't even know how they are suffering. We pray for healing where it is possible. We pray your love and comfort in each of their lives. And we pray for caregivers, O God, those who work so hard to bring healing. We pray for their peace and comfort, for a little bit of energy when they don't feel like that they can do any more. Gracious God, we also come praying for those who are looking at this week and not knowing where they land. For those that are grieving tables that they no longer can sit at, we pray your comfort. For those, O God, who are grieving other losses, we also pray your comfort and peace. Because we know that grief is a process. And we know that it doesn't matter how long ago that we have lost someone or something, that grief can come. God, we also pray for this world around us. We pray for the hungry and the naked and the unhoused. We pray for the places that provide ministry and services and food and shelter. Be with them and be with us to continue to be your hands and feet, living out the prayers that we pray. And God, we continue to pray for our leaders as well. We pray that they would lead us with justice and compassion, that they would seek wisdom, 
and that they would share love. And God, we continue to pray for our church here at Bridgeport. We pray that you would continue to call us out and send us out to share your good news, to share your love with all whom we encounter. Help us to follow where you are leading. Gracious God, there are so many things that we can pray for today. So many things in our hearts and on our minds. But we know, oh God, when we can't find the words, that you still know what we are praying for. So we pray today, oh God, and bring all our prayers to you, both spoken and unspoken, in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. If there are any today who would like to become members of Bridgeport Christian Church, either by transfer of membership or profession of faith in preparation for baptism, you are invited to join me at the front as we stand together as we are able to sing our closing hymn. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make the divine face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and bring you peace now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.